afternoon, everyone. We take great pleasure in welcoming you to this very special webinar on how to engage pre-primary learners in online classrooms. I think this is one of the most sought after topics for today, as we are now faced with the reality of engaging children without being in physical contact with them. And it is all the more challenging when we have to do this successfully with very young children who have very different needs to older children. I'm sure all of you will gain tremendously by attending this webinar, co-hosted by Milestone and LearnFlix. And the speaker for the seminar is someone of great eminence. Takes gives me great pleasure to welcome Ms. Shalini Nambiar, who will be hosting this session. Ms. Shalini Nambiar comes with more than 26 years of experience in education. She has been associated with many very well-known schools like the Heritage School, Gurgaon, the American Excelsior School, the GD Goenka Public School, and also the Vibgyor group of schools. As you may all know, having such a wide and varied school experience is possibly the most beneficial for us because whatever she will be telling us today will be things that we can do actually with our children so that they not just learn, but they gain from this experience and the learning will translate into actions and reactions which they will be able to showcase in everyday situations. So with no further delay, we welcome Ms. Shalini Nambiar. We hope all of you will find lots of takeaways from this session and will gain tremendously. There will be a question and answer session at the end. So please do hold your questions till then. And uh, Ms. Nambiar, thank you so much for doing the webinar for us. Uh, we're most grateful. Thank you so much. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, I'm really, really thank you so much, Sheree, for giving such a nice intro. I think send a copy to my mom-in-law. She must know about me. <laughs> and uh, I'm really, really excited to be here uh, because this, uh, this pre-primary or the early years is something which is very, very close to my heart. Because uh, when I started my career 26 years back, uh, you know, I, was, um, I did not have any teacher's qualifications, B.Ed. and all those things. And I went to a school and I said, listen, I want to join you. So he said, what can you do? I said, I can sing and I can dance. So I joined in as a activities teacher for the, from the early years till grade five. That was my first uh, entry into the education world. And um, I think the best years of my life, if I may say, were the time spent with the early years children. So a very warm welcome and hats off to each one of you who's really doing a commendable job during this time. Uh, this is a very <clears throat> abnormal kind of time which has come and uh, it is very difficult for the pre-primary teachers. I understand, I've been reading a lot about on the social media, <clears throat> you know, screen time, how do I engage the young kids, uh, they're not going to sit and all those things. So I'm here, the whole purpose of the thing is, um, you know, to help you, how can you make it very engaging and how can you ensure that whatever you are trying to uh, put it across to the child, the learning outcomes are achieved. So before I move on, I, uh, you know, to sharing my screen and I've created a little PPT which will help you uh, through this process. Uh, what is very important, which is, which I always say before I begin any workshop, First and foremost, the most important person is you and you need to take care of yourself. You're go we are all going through a very tough time balancing our home and our you know, families and the, the job. So it's not very easy. So I want to begin with the beautiful story. There's this lady, she wants to know that I'm very troubled. I have a lot of things to do. How can I be happy? She wants to discover the secret of happiness. So she goes to the elder in the family and she said, what can I do? So the elder says, okay, I'll send you to the monk where you'll be able to know the secret of happiness. So the lady goes there, the monk says, uh, gives her a spoon and he puts two drops of oil in the spoon. And he says, you take a round of the monastery and come back and tell me what did he observe? So this lady, she takes the spoon and she takes around, it's a huge monastery. 
And when she comes back, the monk says, okay, what did you see? So she said, I didn't see much because I was so busy uh, focusing on the fact that the oil should not drop from the spoon. So the monk says, no, take a round again. I want you to go again. So she, and try and see what all you can see. So she goes around, takes a round, comes back, and she sees beautiful gardens, big rooms, large paintings, all those things in the monastery. And she comes back to the monk. The monk says, okay, so what did you see? Said, I saw the gardens and she describes each and everything in a very big way, <clears throat> whatever she could see. So he said, but where is the oil in the spoon? She said, I was so busy trying to focus on the things what you told me that the oil dropped. So this is a challenge in our lives also. How do we balance? How do I balance my life? Because if I don't balance my life, if I'm not happy, especially at the pre-primary level, you will not be able to generate that energy, that vibe, that enthusiasm to the children. And I think it is extremely important, whatever, whatever class a teacher might be teaching, but you guys are the most important people in the education, this thing, because you actually lay the foundation stone for the a child and I think all of you deserve to give yourself a pat at the back and a virtual hug to yourself because I can't hug you all you are guys are great and hats off to you all I'm going to share my screen I've created a little PPT which I want to show pre-primary teachers play a very important role in children's growth you know you the when the parent gets the child to you i mean they have done the most difficult thing i'll never you know uh, refute that they teach the kid language so when the child comes to you he's already aware of the language he or she and you are supposed to work on that you create the uh, zero to 10 years is such a crucial age in a child's life. And it is said that when you look at a man when he's 60, you can very well say who his kindergarten teacher was. So it's very, very important to understand your importance first. You know, um, I, I have been heading school for almost 18 years and I know how the pre-primary teachers, they look at themselves, oh, I'm somebody down in the ladder. No. You are the guys who pay the mo who do the most important things before the child comes to the formal schooling or what I say, they come to grade one. And that is why you, you are like magician, you're like an artist. So my next slide, I'm just going to move on because I want to <clears throat> share with you. Just one sec, please. <clears throat> yeah, you are <clears throat> you are the most important person and I want you to read each point because it's extremely important. You get to experience things with them for the first time. You know, teaching is a very private profession. That's what I was telling somebody. <clears throat> we are not used to the camera. We are not used to the glare. We are not models, right? That suddenly this online thing has come onto our heads and we are handling it. And I think everybody is doing a great job. You are the one who taps into the child's potential. You are the one who makes a child very creative. You are the one who brings out every day something new. And most of the time I feel <clears throat> teachers don't realize, especially the early years, that you, it is not about, you know, when you, when you talk about your playway methodology or whatever you're doing, you know, the first letters, the first sentence, the first thing in math, who's to be given the credit? It's you. You are the ones who are doing that. It's a very, very difficult thing because a child is coming to you like a blank slate and you are supposed to teach most difficult things because gradually whatever he has learned it becomes easy so you shape his attitude you shape the child's behavior and that is why the early years plays a very crucial role in a child's life his age how he behaves when he's 30 what is the kind of attitude you know it is all depends in the zero to ten years and from zero to ten when i say i talk about uh, three to six or two and a half to six is a very crucial age because that is the time that you're teaching him cognitive skill, you're teaching him motor skill, you're teaching him how to explore, you're teaching him science, maths. My God, you guys are brilliant. So that is something very, very important to understand that what is your role as a teacher? 
So you, you get better at multitasking. You become a better parent. If I t talk about myself, when I took those early years classes, that's how I became a better parent because I was dealing with a bunch of young kids who were so excited to, you know, to reach out to you, to touch you. And that is what is very important during these times. They are missing that touch, which is so very essential at, uh, for a child. And that is why the whole session is about how do we handle that? So we're just going to first and foremost, you must understand the difference between what is pre-primary teaching and how it is different from grade one upwards. See, pre-primary teaching is all about, you know, and play ways, child-centric. You already know, while primary school, it gets structured into subjects, lessons, periods. So there is a difference. How do we take a virtual class for the early years? And how do we take a virtual class for the formal school? What is the kind of time we give? I've been, I've been hearing part of being a lot of webinars. I think it is very, very important to understand the amount of screen time a child should be given, right? And uh, when parents say, oh my God, suddenly there is so much of online, but they must understand. I've actually seen a mom trying to feed her six month old baby by you know, shift, uh, putting her uh, you know, mobile with Velcro on her forehead because he, she wanted the baby to watch the cartoon so that the child will eat. So it's not about what is important at the moment. It is important to understand what is most effective. How do we, how do these children learn? Now, before we move on to the intricacies, you need to reflect, you need to go back. How do these children learn? First and very, you know, because these points are very important. Otherwise, you will never be able to make your classroom, uh, the actual virtual classroom environment impactful. Your relationship with the child. Does the child know you very well? Does he care for you? Is he, is he looking forward to seeing you on the screen? Very, very important. What is the kind of relationship the child has? And how have you built it? So how do you build a relation? It is very, very important that I take the name. Let's say I say, oh, hi, Navinder, hi, Veena, hi, Gauri, how are you? You're looking very nice. I just say that, and what do I do? I strike a chord, Gauri is already smiling. So it's extremely important that in an online situation, which is a very abnormal situation, we connect with the child. The child should look forward to your coming. Oh my God, my teacher's class, wow. The child is excited. How do you create that excitement? That is what we are going to talk about. Yeah, so we'll just go back to the screen. The second very important thing is the child learns best by actively engaging with his environment. In fact, I, <clears throat> You know, I wanted to tell Shiri, I wanted to begin the session with the puppet in my hand and say, hi, everybody, I am so and so, because that would lead to excitement. And honestly speaking, I really didn't find time to make a puppet, but I would have done that. Because you have to think out of the box. How do I make it engaging? You're not going to listen to me if I go on and on and on. You're going to be listening to me only if I make it engaging. And also, I want to tell you, a lot of pre-primary teachers say, oh, there are 40 kids or 30 kids or 25 kids. They make so much of a noise. You know, when you join the job, anybody... I have interviewed so many teachers. Whenever you uh, ask a teacher, okay, what is it? Why do you want to be a teacher? You know, the first thing they say, I'm very passionate. You know, where does the passion go out of the window after a couple of days in the classroom? What really kills it? So we need to think about it. We need to reflect on that because nothing can be engaging, nothing can be exciting if we don't reflect on our own selves, if we don't realize what is important to me. Like, you know, when you cook a dish, right? Nowadays, I think most of us are very unlucky to be not quarantined with our maids. So we don't have a maid. You have to cook, you have to do everything. Now, when you cook, the day you're very, very happy, what happens? The dish comes out fantastic. Everybody says, wow, what a dish you have made. The day you are upset, what happens? The dish doesn't come out well. So what, what happens? It is important to have that passion for your children all the time, especially in the younger days. I mean, I, 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 
I can't, uh, you know, sometimes I get tears in my eyes when I see little kids crying. And because a mother, uh, you know, spends nine months with the baby in her tummy, nine months, labor pain is the worst pain in the world. She goes through it. And then she comes and gives you her child and says, hey, I trust you. We cannot do injustice to that child. We have to make it engaging. We have to teach the kids to learn. And that is what is extremely, extremely important. So we're just going to go back. The third thing, how do the children learn? By being involved. So if, like just now, because you're so many of you, you're thousands of you, that's why you've been put on the mute. But I prefer taking with everybody's video on, where everybody can talk, because... I, I need to make it engaging, but it's not easy because you're so many of you, so you have to, apologies. But the point is, these three points you must remember every day morning. How does my child, I'm a pre-primary teacher, how does my child learn? With my relationship with him, he learns when he's actively engaged, he will learn when he's involved in his learning. Otherwise, it'll be very, very difficult to teach him. Yeah, I'm just showing you a screen I would like you to put it on the chat. If you can read what is written and just read the first four letters maybe and write it quickly in the chat. This is a very important exercise for you to take it forward. So if you can just write it in the chat, what did you, uh, what, whatever. I'm gonna close the screen now. So I would request you to just write it in the chat. Colors, which colors? So somebody said green, somebody said yellow, somebody saying red. Now, what is the difference? What, let, let's go back to the screen. Uh, I told you, read this. Now, I did not tell you whether to read the colors or to read the letters which are inside the colors. So if I read the letters, they are yellow, blue, orange, black. If I read the colors, they are green, yellow, purple, gray, whatever. Why, what is, why is this exercise? Why am I doing it? Because sometimes in a virtual classroom, we think children are listening. We think they are learning, but they're not listening because their perception is very different. Your instructions need to be very, very clear. Very clear, absolutely, what exactly, you, I didn't tell you, I said, just read, and everybody started pouncing quickly in the diaries, okay, oh, let's write down the colors. And this is what happens in a class. You need to understand what exactly I want you to do. So this is something just to get you back into that your communication is very, very important in a class. Next slide, which I want to show is, Six ways, you know, how you can uh, create it very engaging. Let children guide you. You know, you are the boss of the class. You should never forget that. You are the teacher. But in a in a real in a face-to-face -face class, in a virtual class, there is a difference. The difference is that here, children, the small children, they want to touch you, they want to feel you. They can't do that. They're not able to do that. They're missing you. I'm sure they are. You know, all small kids, they love their teachers. I mean, you know, whenever there was a teacher's day and when I was taking the senior classes, I used to be very jealous of the pre-primary teachers because those kids will come with huge bouquets while as the children grow, they say, forget it. We don't care. But so your kids really connect with you. So let children guide you, which we'll talk about it later as we move forward. Provide meaningful alternatives to screen time. I've written very clearly at the bottom. This is what I feel. It's my personal belief. I may be wrong. I may be right. But this is what I think with my experience with the children, that in a week, two classes for nursery, I'm saying 45 minutes because five, 10 minutes they will take to sit down is just enough. And this is not a class where you can teach them. You know, it is a very different ball game when you're doing a virtual class. It is all about creating an engaging environment. So maybe it's a storytelling time or it's a puppet time or it is a rhyme time or whatever. And for a kindergarten, maybe, you know, three classes. That's what I feel. So you have to remember a very important point, which I point out that families are your partners. In the early years, <clears throat> you know, we cannot bring much difference in a child if we do not partner with parent. You know, we, you may be teaching in the phonics, you know, uh, the parent is teaching A, there is a confusion. 
So it is very, very important to build a strong partnership in the pre-primary years for the teacher with the parents. Let's not look at each other as enemies. I know sometimes we do because parents become very demanding, but fine. You know, we are teachers, we are educationists. We know exactly. We, we are like, like a doctor knows how to treat his patient. Teachers know, we know how to educate. We, we are trained for that. Of course, we are not trained for teaching children in their homes, but we do know how should we teach them what is you know, important for a child. So families are your partners, which we'll again go later as we work uh, you know, on the most slides. Remote relationship building is critical. This is a very important part. How do we build a remote relationship? How do I make sure that when, when I'm holding a class, that 45 minutes class on a Monday and a Friday, that's what I would recommend because give children the time, let the parents do some work now. You know, yeah, they may need to do. It's their kid also. And there's a very beautiful poem, where poem, sorry, of whose child it is. And in the first para, the teacher says, my child. And in the mother, parent says, my child. And the second para, the teacher says, my child. And in the third para, both the teacher and the parent, they say, it's our child. And nothing we can do if both the parent and the teacher don't collaborate. You, we, we cannot teach kids how to read if parents don't read. I mean, I have been heading school and I have had parents coming to me, up, you know, teach my kid how to read a book. I said, I always used to ask them, do you read? Do you even pick up a book and read if you don't read? Because you are the child's idol. You have to do it. We will give you the guidance we know. Like a doctor tells, okay, these are the medicines you're supposed to have. In the morning, two tablets. Afternoon, one tablet. Evening, two tablets. Whether you take it or you don't take it, that depends on the person. The doctor can't come home and say, put it or open your mouth and put the tablets. No, you can't do that, right? Agreed, yes or no? Raise your hand if you say, I can see Gauri. Gauri, yes. So that is important. You need to understand. Also very important is that when you are teaching pre-primary kids, they are very demanding. We must understand that. They are very, very demanding because they are inquisitive. They're curious at that age. They haven't seen the world. They want to know what is happening around. They want to know, they want to ask you very silly questions sometimes. They will complain to you. We need to have one big quality. And I appreciate the pre-primary teachers for that. Patience, patience, because that's all. That's a very, very important skill. And, and we, sometimes the teachers become so patient that they don't even respond when a parent is saying something wrong. So don't be so patient. Be patient with the child, not with the parent. You need to tell them we know how to teach. We know how to educate. We know what will be impactful. You know, and you have to guide the parent how he can compliment you at home because virtual teaching is very difficult for the early years. See, they cannot sit. Right, so how do we make it engaging? I'm just going to go back to the screen. Music is magical, play music for them. Give them a lot of music and be kind to yourself. Don't lose patience. There will be time you're trying to uh, tell a song, two kids are looking here, one kid is looking there, the father is there with the kid or the mother is, relax. Have confidence because remember, you are brilliant. If you are brilliant, you can never be wrong. If you are prepared, you can never be wrong. You don't have to lose that confidence, which is the key for your success. So extremely important. How do we better engage children? Integrate technology. Of course, now technology is there. You are doing Zoom sessions. You can show them you know, little stories. But as I said, in one 45 minute class, five minutes settling down, opening circle time, very, very important. You know, sometimes we forget, oh, the children can't sit. Of course they are there. We're going to have a circle time. Everybody is going to talk about how was their day yesterday. Okay, so you say, take their individual names. Names are very important. We all like to be identified by our names. Agreed or no? Yeah. I can only see Gauri. <laughs> yeah. So, you have to take their name because the minute somebody says, Shalini, I look. If you're, if you're saying, hey, look this side, I'm telling a story, they're not going to look. You have to create an excitement. You have to say, okay, how was your day? 
circle time you cannot neglect even in a virtual class please remember that that should be part of your plan how do we do it the opening circle time the closing circle time and i will tell you how we can make it more and more impactful cooperative learning structure very important these are not big words i have made it very very simple because you already have those excellent books with digital technology and how you can do it you already have all that with you all i'm doing is how you as a teacher because the technology can be useful only if as a teacher you are able to implement it effectively you're able to make it engaging otherwise you can show them a video of 15 minutes i can tell you the child will go to sleep you have to create a cooperative learning structure where a teacher rather than calling on one student at a time these small kids also you must understand they are missing the social connect <clears throat> you know in your class why i said 45 minutes 5 minutes you have to let them look at each other talk to each other it's all right you can't begin your class keep quiet now i'm going to be talking no let them talk to each other there are thousands of you on this uh, in this session and i'm sure uh, if 50 of you know each other you're dying to tell each other hey how are you how was your lockdown of course you're excited the same with the kids i've never understood the concept as a teacher as a school head how can children be quiet and learn they can't a quiet class is a dead class when when you take a when, when if a if a you know real life class is taking and whenever i would take around the class where there was a there was a little noise the children running around i knew that that is an engaging class the children are learning the teacher in a quiet class the teacher may be very good she may be teaching very well i have no doubt about that but are the children absorbing or are they sleeping you know if 20 minutes if my voice if i imagine if i read out something to you you will sleep off or you'll put your photo and disappear the same thing with kids you need to make it engaging for them you need to create that excitement have a puppet okay here comes the little puppet little miss shalini is here what wow it is exciting for the little kids so very very important that you try and understand the cooperative structure let them talk for 5 minutes okay children you can you so if if a child is not looking at you you know who's the best friend of that child if you don't then you create you can create virtual that's what we do right in a real class when a child is sitting in a corner we say hey this is your buddy so create that you know this is your buddy because remember one thing education at this stage is not about teaching them a b c d it's about teaching them life skills it's about giving them that confidence to be able to learn later in life it is about teaching them the cognitive the metacognitive the fine motor skills all those skills it's a skill period at this time <coughs> so very very important cooperative learning structure differentiated instruction i find a lot of teachers say how can i differentiate these are small kids what can i do of course you can do <clears throat> you already know there are different ways the children learn right like some of you might like seeing my face some of you might like seeing the ppt say oh she so what what bindi she has put let's see the ppt some of you might like to see a video it is your choice right so i need to be that's why if i put the ppt and keep talking i tell you i will not know what is happening behind my back i need to see you i have to cater to each and every individual of the thousand participants who are here so very important you when you plan your lesson planning is very important if you don't plan your lesson you're planning to fail failing to plan is equal to planning to fail see when you plan a lesson you need to know what exactly you will be doing you need to be having that plan in your mind and remember the early years teachers are like magician because you may go with the plan you you decide okay today in the virtual class i'm going to tell a story right and when you when the children come they start talking to each other because they're seeing each other after maybe a month or two months whatever and you say oh my god your plan has gone out of the window but it's all right because you have taught them a very important skill communication 
You've taught them a very important skill, bonding with each other. You've taught them a very important skill of how do we, you know, take care of each other, sharing, caring. These are the things you should give yourself a pat each day. Not when you've been able to do A to Z, but when you've been able to teach them the life skills. Because they, they will learn. A, B, C, D, they will learn. No, no. I mean, if I was to ask all thousand of you, did you get 100 out of 100 in math all throughout your school days? No. We struggled. We were good in some subjects. We were not good in some subjects. But yeah. But we, what made us stand out in life is our skills. Skills which we learn. And you have to give yourself a pat each day at the end of the day. Not, oh, I could teach them A to Z. No. I could teach them the life skills. Today I taught the children how do they talk to each other. Wow, brilliant. Because there are books, there are things which, you, which are there to help you. But you as a teacher, how can you bring about a difference? Like, you know, when you make, uh, you're from different parts of India. So there is a very famous lal mas, right? Lal mas that, um, you know, the mutton dish, Hyderabadi, I think it is, or Rajasthani. Now, they, everything, you make a normal uh, dish, it is fine. But when you put that typical masala, it gives it a different flavor. The same thing you as a teacher do. The, everything is there for you. The books are there. The digital aids are there, which is like excellent. All you need to do is to create a good, re the recipe is there, create a good dish which becomes exciting, engaging, you know. You know, how you serve a dish makes a difference. Somebody serves an uncooked dish and put it in a nice platter, you feel so tempted to eat. Somebody puts a beautiful dish and it's not cooked, but you will love it. But if it is not properly displayed, you don't cook it. Why do people spend so much money on displaying things on their shop windows? Because that is attractive. So what is your job as a teacher? When, how do I make the classroom engaging? How do I make it exciting? How do I make sure that the earlier kids are sitting there? And it's all right. If a kid says, Nahin, mujhe, I don't want to sit. Okay, baby, you can go and rest. You can come next time. And when you give him that freedom, I can bet you on that. Send him a little note. Dear whatever, the, let's take any name. Dear John, I really missed you on the class. His daddy will read it to him or mommy will read it to him. But I can tell you the child, wow, my man sent me a message. I'm going to come to the class. You have to create that environment. Nobody else can do it. So we're just going to go back to the screen. So how do you give differentiated instruction? Offering them choice. When you're taking this, those two 45 minutes class, you can ask the children, you want to do story today or you want to do a rhyme or you want to see a puppet or you want to see a magic. When you're teaching math, you know, math skill, do a magic activity. Because in a virtual class, let me tell you, the teacher should talk the least. Allow the children to talk. It's more of a discussion. You know, otherwise it's very boring because there are no feelings here. I cannot say, hey, baby, I want to hug you. You can't do that. So you have to create that engagement where the child is allowed to, you know, like there are so many features in Zoom. You have a whiteboard where you can draw something, ask the children to just scribble. It's all right. You don't expect a perfect thing. But what is more important at this stage is that allowing children to select. Okay, you are taking a class of 35. Two children say, no, I want to do song. Two say, I want to do story. Okay, what we'll do is, you decide first story or first rhyme. Give them the choice. They will decide it. The small children, treat them like little adults. Stop treating them as babies. That's one thing. I'm a Montessorian and I've always believed in it. The small kids should be treated like adults. And when you give them that respect, when you allow them to make a decision, they always make it and they stick to it. Because these kids, you know, it is the way we communicate to them is very, very important. Teach them goal setting. How do you do it? And these are very important things. You know, in life, um, you don't sit in a train and somebody says, where are you going? Mm, anywhere. You can take me anywhere. You have a plan, right? I'm going to go there. Yeah, Nisha is saying, even I'm a Montessori and I love Montessori. Yeah. So you, you have a plan. You buy a ticket. You book a hotel room, you apply for leave. So you have a plan, right? You don't just sit on a train and say, I'm going anywhere. I mean, we can't do that even now. Now, maximum from drawing room to bedroom only we can go. And if you have the luxury of a big house, then you can probably go to the garden, right? So what is important is that you have to teach these little kids goal setting. 
how do you teach them in a virtual class? Okay, today we are doing the rhyme. What do you think we should do on Friday? Give them the choice. The minute you give them the choice, they're going to say, yes, I want to do this. Ma'am, I want to do this. Let it be. How does it make a difference? Does it make a difference? We are going through a very stressed time and the children are very stressed out. Let me tell you, they're not understanding. The children sometimes are not able to express, but they are stressed out. They, they are seeing their parents stressed out. Mommy working from home. For them, it's very weird. Daddy working from home. Everybody, you know, they're a different family atmosphere now. And they're not understanding. So you as a teacher have a double role because you, you are not only impacting that kid, because if you make that kid positive, that kid is impacting his family and you are creating a positivity in maybe the house of 40 people. So it's not those 40 kids. Virtual class means you're impacting 14 to 80 parents. So you have a huge responsibility. That is why I've been writing a lot. Teacher is a, after doctor, she's a true Corona warrior because nobody is realizing the kind of job we are doing. It's not easy. We can't make this virtual. We are not used to all this, but we are doing it. We are struggling. So very, very important. Goal setting, teach him that. Now, I always say that virtual class is something like gardening and knitting. It's an analogy. You know? Sorry, I wanted to sip. I get very excited. Good teaching is like gardening. So what happens in gardening? The most important part is the soil. Now, if you begin the class only in a, oh, keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet, nobody will keep quiet. The small children can't sit. Their attention is only two minutes. If in those two minutes you can catch them, you have won. Otherwise, they are lost and they will go off. And the mummy will come on the screen and you'll probably be teaching mummy, right? And which you don't want to do because we are not trained to teach parents. We are not trained. We, I haven't been taught to how to teach a mother or a father, right? So you need to be very, very important that how when you plan your lesson, what is the initial thing? What will I do? How will I do it? <clears throat> yeah, you love the Montessori. I also love it. So it's extremely important when we... So knitting, what is knitting? Knitting is, knitting again, so the soil is the most important. So if you don't put the right soil, plant will not grow. The same with knitting. If you do not get the first row right, what do you do? You will have to un, uh, you know, rip all that back and then start again. So extremely important that how do you plan your lesson? So these are some things you don't have to stress too much and get uh, you know, this thing because I'm going to be dealing with Things which are very, very important for the pre-primary and most important is the planning. Now, some tips to help you. Plan your circle time well. Very important, opening and closing. How will I open the class? 45 minutes? Okay, two minutes. How can you have to have a theme? You know, there are a lot of different kind of, you know, circle time is not just, you know, asking children to talk. There has to be an outcome. When we make a plan, there are two important things which are very, very important. The objective and the outcome. What am I trying to teach and what is my, what am I expecting? The child would learn by the end of this class. And you can only achieve the outcome if your lesson is well planned. So when you're doing a circle time, you know, let's say you want to teach the value of honesty. So how are you going to do it? Are you going to tell a story? Let each child say, okay, one honest act they did. Whatever way you're doing, I don't know. But you need to do a opening circle time because very important for the early years kids. For, I'm talking all from personal experience and from my dealing with kids. I'm honestly telling you, I, I no idea what others are doing, but this is my feelings because I work on what I feel is good and true. I want the children to feel the same way that they don't miss you. They are feeling that what ma'am was doing in the class, oh my God, she's doing the same thing virtually now. They'll be so excited. You have to let them feel, because these are not bigger kids, where they want something different. No, they want the younger kids, for them stability, everything same is very important. You know, they, they, do, they, don't, they want the same environment. So this man used to do circle time in the class. Now she's doing, oh, wow, on the screen, I cannot miss it. So you've already created the excitement for a child. So your plan is very, very important, extremely important. The second very important thing is involve parents. And this 
throughout my session, I will be stressing at least 100 times. You'll have to forgive me for it because in the pre-primary, you cannot do anything, especially now if the parents are not involved. We're not telling parents to teach. We're not telling parents to do things, but they have to support the child at home. If you cannot do anything. So it's a very good idea that you send a little, you know, when you make a plan, you send a weekly, I call it netiquettes, which will again come later. Yeah, I will show you the tips. I will go back to the slide. So you send them a little mailer, dear Mr. Uh, dear so-and-so, uh, this is what I will be teaching in the next 15 days. And this is the two classes I'll be taking. I would request you to help me in this, 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 this. Also, please do not, you can help your child set up the, you know, the uh, whatever, the laptop, but try not to be there when the class is going on because the children get confused. They don't know. They, the children, little children get confused. Is she my teacher or my mommy is my teacher? I don't know. I'm confused. So what will happen when we are confused? We don't learn. So parents need to, you have to create the trust that you trust me. I'm going to teach your child. He's not going to miss out anything. And these are very tiny. At the moment, my focus is on life skills. You know, academics will happen, but I cannot do too much because they're very young. They cannot sit on the screen for long you know, they, they are restless. They, they cannot, you cannot get them excited. But remember, sometimes you might feel frustrated. You might say, oh my God, I'm not able to achieve my outcome. But, you know, it happens with all of us. As a teacher, I have experienced it. And there is a, but there's a very beautiful story I want to sh uh, tell you, which will help you understand that what a kind of difference you make. So what is important is there are two hospital beds, right, in a hospital. And one guy's bed is near the window, right? And he is, uh, the, the other guy whose bed is away from the window, his legs are broken, so he cannot get up. So this guy whose bed is near the window, he tells him every day, oh, wow, outside is beautiful flowers, beautiful things. I can see this, I can see that. He will keep talking. And this guy would start, imagine and feel very happy. And he started getting cured because with positivity, illness goes away, right? We all know it. Now, one day when he gets up, the guy with broken legs, he looks to the bed near the window and he sees the bed is empty. So he asks the nurse, where is that guy gone? So the nurse says, I'm so sorry, but he died. So he says, okay, can you shift my bed near the window? Because I want to see the beautiful things. Now, when his bed is shifted near the window, he looks out, there is a blank wall. So as a teacher, what is your role? You have to create those sparks in a child's eye. You have to create those dreams, which even though we may not have achieved in pre-primary is a very important stage to do that. I mean, I've seen, I've seen what happens in the pre-primary is we try and help them so much so that they're never able to stand up on their own. Everything we'll do, no, 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 you'll fall. No, 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 you don't go there. No, nothing will happen. They are, you, you, what do you want your students to be? That when your child, when your student is in 30s or his 40s, he says, wow, she is the teacher who made the difference. Yes, I will show you uh, how to do the uh, assessments also. So we just go back to the screen. Plan your circle time well. Involve parents. Very, very important. Teach kids, use anchor charts. You can show it. You can create a little PPT and show them. I've made something like, you know, what are good friends? And I've created an owl here. And what do they do? Play together, be kind. To give them, you have to, you have to give them some nice images. They cannot read. They are, they are very tiny. So the same thing happens in your two classes, whatever you're taking, whatever you're teaching, you have to create, you know, artistically creative things so that the children can find it appealing. And I think you have a lot with your digital aids which you have. Teach kids how to make friends. Routine is very important. You have to keep telling parents that it's, if, if it is school time going on, I don't know now, I think the schools are closed or open in different parts of India. It's a different law, rule. So, but if your schools are open, the children must follow the same routine as school because children cannot start thinking, oh, wow, it's a holiday, now I can sleep. No. The parents need to understand the child must get up at the same time as he was going to the school. Why is that important? Because 
We are teaching him a very important skill and put it in your letter, time management. The child will never learn to appreciate. I'm not telling, expecting the child to be dressed in a school uniform for a virtual class. I read somewhere some schools were doing that. Don't do that. But you need to tell the child that he needs to be dressed. He needs to be looking good when he comes for a class. Just the same way you would also dress up. You can't be in your sleeping suit and taking a class just because you're at home. I also put on whatever I can to look good, to feel professional. So it is extremely important. Take it seriously because the skills are very important. Again and again, I'm saying at this stage, you can do a lot of things, but if you give them the right skills, you will be able to build on that. So if you're giving them, so, so what is important is that you share with the parents. I'm going to go back. Use and teach kids how to make friends, routine. How can they make virtual friends? You have to tell them they're missing their friends. You know, you can tell the daddy, okay, let him have a Zoom call with one of his friends. The children will love it. Parents will have to spend some time, but you have to guide them. Make keepsake, let them make a drawing and get it for one of their, your classes and show. Each one can show on the camera. Even if you can't see, say, wow, this is so beautiful. Let's say I've asked you to all make a drawing. And then I, then I say, okay, I can see four or five names on the top. And I say, wow, Shiri, that's beautiful. Navinder, how did you manage to do it? Veena, that is exotic. You use those adjectives. Even if you don't like, even if it is not according to what, yeah, the International Labor Day, they're dressed up like community helpers. Excellent. Very, very important that you engage them. So let's just go back to the screen. Host a pajama party. What you were doing in the school? Why can't you do it? Okay, to on Friday in our class, we'll have a pajama party. You also wear a pajama in your virtual class. They also wear whatever you used to do. You have different kinds of days, color days, and I don't know, pre-primary nose. You, you try. The main intention is the children should not miss school. They should feel now the classroom is coming in their homes. They are doing the same thing exactly like you're doing in the class, but in a, on a TV screen. So it is important that the child feels that same routine is being followed because when he finds a difference, he will lose interest. Yes, fruit salad activity, mixing the fruits, the, excellent. My only request is tell the parents, let the child do it. Because what is happening is, I, I, I'll be honest, and I think you guys will agree with me. Um, I have been always confused as a teacher, whether I'm check, checking a child's work or am I checking the parent's work. So you need to tell when you're in your letter, which you send to the parents very clearly, please do not help a child. Like if you're teaching him salad making, right? Okay, daddy and mommy can cut the veggies, salads, but leave it. Let him mix. Never mind if he, if he drops. It's all right. We want to see a child's work. We don't want to see what, what you have done. Lemonade party, right? Yeah, excellent. You can do so many things. Every week, plan something. When parents are saying, Kya, why early years online classes? Because they're not understanding. They're not understanding the importance of routine, which is so important for a child to grow up. If I don't have a routine, I get up with depression, honestly. And it's killing us because suddenly we are realizing every day morning we get up. Oh my God, we have to do this, 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 this. We can't go to office. We loved, we are missing it. We are missing going out. Same thing with the kids. The parents must understand the routine needs to be there for them to understand that there's not much difference. Like I was going to school. Okay, I can't go because there is a virus which is not very good and it can catch us easily. Tell them those small stories. So that they understand that why they cannot go. No, 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 no. Don't talk about COVID. No, they must know. But they must know what is important at their level. That is important. Very, extremely important. Let's not shy away. Laugh with your kids. Very important. Give vis kids visual clues to help them follow directions. You can make a, you can say, you know, like when you start taking a class, like I do, I did, uh, you know, I tell, okay, if you understood, put your thumb up. If you didn't understand, put your thumb down. If you don't like me, put it like this. And the children would love it. They'll struggle. The intention is not for them 
to be able to hold. See, you're teaching them motor skills, right? Am I right? I'm not so much of a pre-primary person, but I'm just asking. These are the, but I know I've dealt with them. That these are the finer details. You have to do it. You have to give them. Okay, you can clap. You can pull your ears. You can tap your head. We are going to sing a song now. When you do actions, when you do that, you can't be taking a class like this with the early years. Mm, you know, A for they're not going to bother. You need to create that excitement, engaging your voice modulation, which I'm coming in the next slide is very very important. Teach kids exactly how to listen. You know, a very, uh, <coughs> sorry, the sad part is when teachers mute the children. Don't mute them. No. You want to hear your voice or you want them to enjoy your class? You have to take a decision. Yeah, yoga, exercise, whatever, you can do a lot. Do not mute them. Let them be on unmute. There will be little noise. But that is fine. You need to make the class engaging. When do children make noise? Children make noise when they don't enjoy. So you should have something. Okay, what is, you know, you can have, okay, activity. What is the sound? They will quieten up. You know, we used to do this. Mm, quiet. You know, do anything. But after with the little ones, after on our feet moving and creating, yeah, they can get up and dance. So what? Everything, every time you don't have to be on the camera. Whatever you are doing, you need to make it engaging. <coughs> Just let's go back to the screen. One minute. Yeah. Incorporate a lot of art. Very, very important. You have to have, because these children are very creative. So you need to incorporate a lot of art, music, and most important, give them a lot of time to play, even in the virtual class. Like... <coughs> sorry if i go here you can use the whiteboard you all know it right and you can create drawings on that and you can ask them i will take all the questions please let's just move on this is very important i want you to spend two minutes and write it on the chat what exactly are you doing from this one two three four five six just spend two minutes on this. two only a minute maybe I think the Montessori people will understand the inner voice. Yeah. Should I remove the slide? Any of you doing any of this as part of your classroom? Sending them a little video. Okay, one, two, three. How do you tie your shoelace? Come on, let's do it. Go, you know, let's do how do you talk on a telephone? Okay, today we are just going to do how do we talk on a Zoom class? Hello, good evening. How do you do? What do we do? Yeah, golden words, rhymes, very important. Life skills are the life of the children at this age. So do make sure that this becomes part of your thing. But how will the children, I've, I've noticed a lot of time <clears throat> when the teachers, they want children to say, please, thank you. They themselves are not using it. So you need to use those words yourself. Okay, so let's say if one of you is not listening, I cannot see all of you. So whatever, let's say guy three is not listening. And I say, um, guy three, you need to listen. You need to listen to what I'm saying. Guy three is still not listening. Guy three, may I have your ears, please? Like this, make some action, make some you know, different things on the screen. You can do so much. Your desire... To be on the screen is got fulfilled through COVID, right? We are all on the screen now. We, I mean, imagine, we all wanted to do that, right? When we were kids, we all wanted to be actresses and wow, singers and come on the stage. Now we are there. Parents are watching. Everybody is watching. So what? So you need to create some actions where the child gets excited. So let's say he's still not listening. They are talking. Okay, then I'm going to be quiet. And then there comes the bell. You can have a bell to quieten them. Like in the Montessori, it's one bell where you say, okay, be quiet, quiet. So you use different ways rather than using your mouth. Because every time I say, God has given us two ears and one mouth, we should listen more and talk less. It's a very, very important thing. That's why there are, there are not two mouths. So, Let's just go back to the screen. 
You can tell them whether they know how to fold clothes. Tell the parents that today's activity is let the children, this is all learning. This is all education, right? Now we just, the role of this thing, it's very, very important. This is huge. Students will only give you what you expect from them. If you expect this much, then that is exactly what you get. You have to raise the bar. You have to raise what exactly are you expecting from a child. That is something, the expectations, how you create it, what you will do is very, very important. And that becomes your priority. <clears throat> Plant seeds of early independence, extremely important. You know, the pre-primary, I've written primary, but the, uh, it's basically pre-primary. You, what I said in my earlier slide also, give them a choice. Because when you give them a choice, they take the decisions. And when they take the decisions, they stick to it much more because it's there. So what have you taught them? You've taught them responsibility. You've taught them decision making. You've taught them how to be able to choose, which is extremely important. You know, when we grow up as adults, we... <clears throat> we are not able to choose whether I want to do this or I want to do that. We can't make a choice because we have not been taught right from childhood. We were only, you know, like an army. Oh, it's English. Now it's math. Now it's science. That's what you will do. I've always believed that education should be where you give a choice. Okay, you don't give a choice that you want to go and dance or you want to go and play or you want to study. Then they will all go and play. But you have to be a smart teacher, smart parent, where you give the right choice. Okay, you want to do English first or you want to do math. Okay, I'll do math. Okay, you do math first then we'll do English. Okay, you, you forget about, yeah, our Indian culture. That is what it is. To be different, you have to walk the path which nobody has walked. And as a pre-primary teacher, that's what I first thing I said is to pat yourself because you are the most important part of an education industry because you are making the difference in millions of those small kids. <clears throat> what what uh, in the when they come to the middle school or when they come to the primary school, they are being polished. But who teaches the first few things? It's you. So you need to be very, very proud of yourself. You need to be confident of yourself. <clears throat> you need to be able to tell them, the parents, the, uh, the other colleagues, everybody, that this is what is most important at this stage. And this is what I want to do. So when you plan your circle time, circle time can be, I feel, I believe very strongly, can be all around values. Pick up one value in a month. Make it a values, because that is the way, because values can't be taught. They can be only imbibed. So when you, when you talk and values can be only done, you remember when we, when I was a kid, I mean, you guys are young, but when I was a kid, we used to have one moral science uh, period. I mean, we might find, found it, you know, at that time very boring, but I think it taught us a lot because the teacher would read the story and that story, maybe <clears throat> at that time we'll giggle and laugh and find it boring. But later in life, it has an impact because let me tell you, as a pre-primary teacher, you face a lot of frustration. You're trying to teach them something, but you're not finding them learning or you're not finding a difference. But education is not short. You cannot make a difference in one year, two years. Yeah, you make a difference in a person attitude, behavior when he's 30. Like today, whatever I am, I think it's my teachers who worked on me. I didn't, I didn't feel it at that moment, but now I recall everything. So you make the circle time. I feel very, very strongly because values are missing values based so that the children learn it can it, it you 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 are able to divide your you know the classroom time on that and virtual classes as i said for nursery and kindergarten it's more about sending a booklet home okay this is what i want your kids to do like a painting or numbers <clears throat> whatever you want them to do with a little note to the parents that i want you to not force him but let him follow the routine I will come only on Monday and Friday, see you. And on Monday, what you are doing, send a plan so that the children know about the plan and they are excited. We're just going to go back to the screen. <clears throat> Extremely important, effective communication, voice modulation. 
very, very important. You know, you have to use actions that support your tone. You have to be very, very calm. It's very important. I mean, suppose, imagine if I just talk, okay, I'm going to be teaching you the lesson and I read out the entire PPT. You're going to like it? No. You're going to get bored. You'll say, you will be telling Shri, what have you got? And, and I've seen, I've been part of so many webinars. Halfway, half the people disappear or they put their photos. I don't want, I want that excitement in your eyes. And that can only happen when I talk to you. Even if you're 9,000 people, if I'm able to connect with each one of you, of course I'm able to do it. Give me a thumbs up if I'm able to connect with each one of you. You know, because then only you are listening to me. Otherwise you would have gone off half an hour back. Very important with the little kids. This is something important. And when you say, what a difference am I making? Sometimes I find teachers saying, I don't, I'm just a pre-primary teacher. And I know in schools what happens. I've been a school head and I've been a teacher, how the PGT looks at the pre-primary, mm, you know? But no, you have to tell people you are the most important part of the school. If I don't, if I didn't teach your kids A, B, C, D, he will not be able to write an essay in grade 10. Remember that. That is the way, the language. You have to have confidence in yourself. So extremely, extremely important. Voice modulation is very important. Storytelling is an art. I find a lot of people telling stories, but they're very boring. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, if I say a story, once upon a time, there was a king and he went to with and got married and then they lived heavily. You're not interested. Once upon a time, there was a king and he found a beautiful girl and they had a beautiful dog. How does the dog make a sound? Now the children say, boom, boom. What have you done? You're engaging the kids. And the dog went running in the farm. And in the farm, there were a lot of pigs. And how did the pigs make a noise? Every child will start. What have you done? You have built a connect. Stories can never be one way. It can be with adults. With the little ones, it has to be engaging. It has to be where they can participate in the storytelling. That is a good story, according to me. Because I've seen a lot of stories also. And I find like I, when I was in early years and I joined them as a music teacher, I, I, the, the kids are all grown up and they might be watching me. They're married with kids and all. They used to, my name was Min, Pinocchio man, because I would tell them, mm, if you're not going to listen to me, my nose is going to grow longer. And my name became Pinocchio man because they, they love associating. It's all right. We are all there to have fun. We, we need to enjoy what we are doing. And you can only enjoy and have fun if you love kids. And I have always loved kids. And I think all of you also love kids. You know, we are, we are missing that hug with the kid. We are missing those little kids pulling our shirt and saying, hey, ma'am, I want to talk to you. And four kids in the classroom wanting to go to the washroom together. And you, you are getting upset. But we missing that. And we all know it. So it's extremely important Tell the parent the same routine we were doing in the class. You try and follow that. It's not holiday time because the child should feel it's the same environment. This is the booklet. Ask him to do it whenever, whatever he can do. Don't force him and don't do it for him. Don't try and do it. You know, if I ask all thousand of you to draw a house, you'll all draw with that. You know, we all draw that hut house. I still don't know where we, we don't live in those houses. Any of you live in that house? I don't know. You must invite me after the lockdown. But why do we do it? Because we, we are prone to rote learning. Right from childhood, the teacher will say, I'll tell you what you will draw. No, don't. So tell the parent, let the kids draw. It is their creativity. Let them express. These are very young kids. Stories. Now, every Jack and Jill went up the hill, whatever the story, whatever way, the child wants to end it in a different way. It's fine. You're not giving any marks to that kid. Let him be. Because what is very important is that you give them your 45 minutes should not be, should be very, very engaging. You should, you know, how you do it, that will come again back to that. But let's just go back. So storytelling is an art where you need to talk about the things you see in the book, make connections between the story. Like you can ask the kid, have you been to the zoo? Did you go to the mall when? What did you like about that? Or whatever you want to say. 
And this is the very, very important point, which I always say, because this is what lacks. So I'll be honest with you. When I do a session, I send a mailer to everybody that you are expected to log in by this. You're doing, you're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do this because that's very important. The same way as a teacher, for a virtual class to be impactful, it's very important. Whatever two classes you're taking or whatever you're taking is to send netiquettes. Like etiquettes, it's netiquettes, where you send them a little mailer. And the best thing is to address it to the child. Okay, dear, uh, you know, Jaya, uh, this is for you. I will be doing this. When you send that, it, it should be, I prefer in a letter format because it makes it very exciting for the child when he receives a letter from the teacher rather than a little mailer going with the plan. No, you send the plan, what you're going to be doing, what is the, and in the plan also mention what is the parent expected to do? What, how would I, please support me in doing this. Let's make the child do this. Make the child do this. You have to be very, very clear in your instructions to the parents so that the parent is aware, what am I supposed to do? And so when you send a little mailer, it, you've already built a connect. Yeah, some of you are doing excellent. It, it actually builds a connect. And I've been stressing right from last month to everybody that this is what is very important. And then every week, send a thank you note to the parent. Thank you so much for helping me. Because you are doing a major chunk of my work at home. Of course they are doing it and we must appreciate it. But you, if you send a thank you note, it makes a difference. Whether they acknowledge it or no, you know, well, you know, it's hilarious. When I take a session, I always send a thank you note. And one person may respond or nobody respond. But I don't care. It makes me feel good that at least I have thanked people because those are basic skills. So very, very important that you create a little mailer. And now when you send the kids things, like this is extremely important. Plan lessons that match your students' attention spans. Remember, you've got two minutes, then move. You know, the younger kids, they have very short attention span. I've just given you this, then we'll come back to this. Which of these is the odd one out? Can you just write it in the chat, please? And I'll just show you this picture for 30 seconds. Okay, 10, 9, 8. Yeah, anybody can write in the chat, Cinderella. What was that? This is called a starter. Because in a virtual class, it is very important, very simple thing, make one PPT. For the little kids, nursery kids, they may not be able to read. Even you can put pictures and say, okay, what is this? It, it becomes engaging. Oh, ma'am is asking us something. Excellent. You all know Cinderella. I'll ask you another one. Let me just go back to the screen. Yeah, the next one is, okay. So name them. She had long, beautiful hair. She, the second one is she lived with a stepmom and two sisters. And third one, she lived with seven dwarfs. So long, beautiful hair, stepmom, and seven dwarfs. Name them. Just put it in the chat. Yeah, Snow White, Snow White, Rapunzel. Yeah, what did I do? I created excitement in your mind. I created something which even with a large number, you got engaged because everybody started looking at the screen and thinking. You cannot. So with the little kids, when you do a circle time, have, you know, maybe on a, a PPT, a one slide, it's very, very easy to make a starter activity, you know, which creates the excitement in the minds of the children, which they're not expecting. You know, you can have whatever way you, you, you are brilliant. You know, I'm not that brilliant and you will be able to use your imagination to create that because see, when you go and watch Netflix, right? I'm sure all of you are watching Netflix. Yes or no? Put it in the chat. I think I want to know. So but what happens when you're watching? No. Yes. Yes. Okay. Some people are not watching. You must watch. You need to have some fun in your life. Okay. Now, what happens when you watch Netflix? How do you decide which movie you are going to see? You decide by looking at the trailer or by listening to people's comments, right? And we, when we switch on the movie, we see the first 30 seconds or two minutes. And if we don't like it, we change. We go to another one. Same thing with the virtual class. This is not a real class. If you do not make it engaging in the first 30 seconds or first two minutes, you've actually lost it. Nobody is, the children are not going to be listening. And remember, these are very, very young kids. 
they, they anyway, why I said 45 minutes? Because some kids will go off, I'm sleepy. Some, you know, they, they do in the class all that, right? When you're trying to take a class, they'll get up, they'll go, they'll stretch. But let them be. It's all right. You cannot expect 30, 25, whatever kids to sit and screen and watch you like this. No, you can't. You might have the attention of 10. It's all right. You know, the, they will, they will be a difference. They will come back, but it has to be gradual because like you are finding it difficult. The children are also not understanding what is this online class, especially a little young kid. He doesn't know why is my mommy who always said, don't watch TV is now saying sit in front of the laptop. I mean, come on. The child is also equally not understanding and nobody's asking the child, okay, what's your problem? Why does he, some children are addicted to cartoons. I've seen kids, even my own son, when he was young, he's 32 now, but he'll be sitting in front of the TV and eating his lunch, watching the cartoon because cartoon creates excitement. That is why. So we have to create that excitement in our virtual class. So extremely important, have a little starter, one slide, nursery KG, you know, just put some pictures, just put some little things which they can ask. And then you ask them, okay, what is this? And always change your voice. Maybe you can give yourself a new name because remember, this is a virtual class. It's not a real class. They can't touch you. They're trying to, a lot of kids come and want to do this to the teacher. They can't do that to you. They, they, are, they are really missing you. And they can't imagine why is my teacher coming on the screen? Why can't she come home? You know, they're feeling that. Yeah, use a different name. You know, maybe I am now Tintin Shalini or whatever you want to say, whatever name. Because what happens, the kids get excited. Can we start with a particular theme day? Of course you can. See, you guys are brilliant. All I'm trying to tell you is for a virtual class, very, very important. Your energy level has to be high. You cannot be in a bad mood and taking a virtual class because you, you can't, you don't have control. The only control in your hands is to have the children watching you for the next 45 minutes. And how do you do that? That is entirely on you. So we'll just go back. So you have an exciting starter activity, you know, it's very important to develop because this is a very, very important thing for the younger kids. How do you develop their listening and speaking skills? Get their full attention. So you can use little memes. You can use, you know, things. As I told you, you can have a bell. You can have a glass. You can have a pen. That when I show the red pen, that means they're going to look at me. And when I show the blue pen, that means I don't have it. But you can show that you're not, you can talk to each other whatever way you want to do it. Make reading an interactive activity. In a virtual class, you cannot read. Nobody is going to listen. I mean, imagine, just look, if I read for two minutes, difference between real and virtual class. What is a good teacher? You're not going to listen. You have to have various resources around you, right? You, you can use anything at home and it is exciting for the kids. Okay, what is this noise? Can you guess how many tablets are there in this bottle? Can you guess? This is a very important exercise. I hope you know for nursery, kindergarten. You remember when we were kids and we would go to 25. Yay! Parat, you are quite correct. <laughs> I love to count it. I don't know. But if you remember when we were young, we used to go to the... I was young, sorry, not you. You are still young. We would go to the fete and they would have the cake weighing thing. Okay, how much is this cake? That is a very important exercise. Part of math. And if even nursery, kindergarten, very engaging thing. You can do a starter activity like this. How many tablets in this? Can you guess? Let's see. Now, everybody will give their numbers. You know, you can, say, you can give them a clue. Sounds of wild animals or whatever you want to do. You can have animal puppets. I think you can make it. And you can say, oh, because of the lockdown, my lion doesn't, is looking like a dog. You can make it funny. The children need to get engaged. What I find, I've been part of a, I've been attending a lot of online classes. <clears throat> what I feel one thing lacking is the energy. 
energy is very important. You cannot make the audience engaged if my energy is low, if I'm not feeling good. So you need to be energized. If you're not feeling up to it, you can always take the class the next day. Nobody's forcing. I think you should do that. Because a boring class can bring more harm to you than and to the child will lose interest. So very, very important that have exciting activities, reading. So make it reading. If you're, if you're trying to teach a kindergarten kid to read, you can do it online. But it's not difficult. It's like a real class. Okay, you open your book. I'm going to read till this much. Now you continue. Okay, and take their names. Don't say, okay, you read, you read. Okay, now Gauri, you read. Now Sachin, you read. Veena, now your turn. Let them read two, two lines. And when they read, then you can say, okay, we are all going to clap. Like the baby, do it in the real class. What happens, the children are feeling the same excitement, which they feel in the real class. Yeah, we can use Ambox. Yeah, you guys are brilliant. You're younger and you have more ideas than me. All I'm doing is to ignite that flame in you. Because I think all of us can really make a difference. <clears throat> Play listening games. Very important. Virtual class, you can always do it. Okay, what is this sound? You know, imagine, I'll ask. You know, I mean, you are too many, but this is the sound of water. You can, you can take out sound with the bell. My first preference is to learn. Of course, you should know their names. You have to know their names. If you don't know their names, that was my first thing. If you remember the first slide, how can you, the, the way children learn, the first thing is that when they have a relationship with you, if they don't have a relationship, if you don't even know, the, the, I mean, all of you, if I was to ask you which teacher you hated the most, and all of you will say that we hated that teacher who didn't even know my name. You know, it is funny, but my name makes a lot of difference. Yeah, it builds cognitive development of a child. So very, very important that you create, you can do sound uh, listening games for kids because your aim is the children must develop their listening and speaking skills. Play story chain, you know, okay, with the little kids, okay, once there was a tiger, Gauri, then you continue, then Sachin, you continue, whatever, you take the names. It is important that the virtual class, please remember the difference is that if it's not engaging, you will have pictures or they will not come to your class. Now, I, I find a lot of uh, teachers saying that we're using a lot of aids, but they're not coming because what is important is not just the aids, it's the energy. The energy level is very important and you need to make it engaging for while you are in the class, you know, so the whiteboard you can use or you can use, you told me, you mentioned some of them. We feel respect when calling. Yes, of course, we need to respect them. Um, be a good listener. Allow them to speak because, see, nobody is listening to them. We, we teach them. Why does a child come to a school? The child comes to a school to learn the four skills, okay, reading, writing, listening, speaking, whatever. But why is our focus only on reading and writing? We need to allow them to listen. We give them that, teach them that you can listen and I'm listening. And how will we teach them to listen when we are listening? So we allow them to question us. They might ask in the middle of a story, ma'am, what is COVID-19? No, you cannot say, no, I'm taking a class. I will not talk because you can tell them in whatever way you want to tell them, whatever little information you want to give it. Because why? Because that is something which is bothering them. And unless their question is answered, they will not be absorbing anything you're saying. And you all know it. Suppose you have a question right now. You are adults, so you know how to process things in your brain. But the little kids are not able to, if they have a question, <clears throat> Haven't you, don't you remember in a real class, a kid says, ma'am, you tell me the answer because I might forget the question then. Because their mind thinks so fast. So you need to answer them, whatever they're asking, which teaches them the listening skills. And they also become good listeners when they hear. Help them build vocabulary so you can play vocabulary games which is like very, very easy. You know, online you can do it. You can write some words and you can tell them, okay, tell the full word, you know, or you're teaching them uh, to form, uh, you know, any kind of thing you can do, whatever you're doing in your class. I mean, whatever your books are doing, you just have to make sure that what kind of resources you are using, is it engaging? 
And when you are checking on yourself, your plan, you need to see, is it engaging for me? Am I, am I getting bored or am I enjoying it? It's extremely, extremely important. I made this little thing and, you know, this is just a, some sort of a self-assessment for the little kids because they can't, they, they might not be able to, uh, some, some children are shy, they don't say. So at the end of the, what is very important, another thing in the virtual class is taking feedback. Feedback is very important. You giving feedback and taking feedback, okay? So did you understand? Did you not understand? What did you not understand? How would you know it? So you, instead of just asking them, because small children cannot speak, you know, so your Monday, Friday class can be utilized for that, that 45 minutes out of which the 10 minutes, you can just say that, okay, what is, uh, you know, you can just put a tick here, you know, you send them that in an email and they will, they, they can all put a tick. It's very, very simple. And it will come back to you. With, and you will know exactly which child is understood, which child is not understood. And what is the reason? Because if you do not take feedback from the uh, children, the children will lose interest. Why they don't find, they feel excited. If I'm taking your session and I ask you, okay, okay, how did you find it? I want to know. The minute you write, it gives me a sort of encouragement. It allows me to know what exactly have you understood, where you are lacking, where I can work better next time. So very important that you take instant feedback. You give them feedback also. Okay. And your feedback, remember, these are young kids. These are very, very small kids going through a lot of stress because of COVID. Keep telling them, wow, you're great. You're Give them positive vibes. Because what helps in these younger days is positivity. Yeah, you can also send a PPT, but not more than three slides. There's something called death by PowerPoint nowadays. I mean, I mean, you'll also as adults, you can write on the chat. If I was to just, you, you were not supposed to see my face, only a PPT. Wouldn't you get bored? You, you're going to get bored. Of course you will get bored. You want to see my face. You want to see my energy. You want to see my expressions. You want to see me jumping. So you, you need to see me, right? And if you're not able to see me, you, you're going to lose interest. So how do we, you can have group singing. Okay, we're going to sing a song, everybody. We're going to have, okay, she will sing, or, or you can have individual singing. You can teach them so many things. And it is, remember one thing, most important is your classroom needs to be very, very engaging. That is something you need to understand. And children trust their teachers a lot. And you have to understand that you are the backbone on which they fall. The parents believe you because you are the ones who's taking care of the younger kids. You might face a challenge, but for that, you need to send the netiquettes, which I told you, making it absolutely clear to the parents what you are expecting from them. What is, the, what is their role in their online class? Please leave the laptop on and you can quietly move out from there because you are anyway doing, you don't expect a child to do anything on the laptop. If it closes, you can do any kind of things. So what is important is your mailer, <clears throat> or you can tell parents that if you want to sit with your child because there is a problem, then we would request you, please maintain silence. Extremely important. And what is the harm? You, because we are teaching the kid, not you. And there might be times that you're wrong, but it's all right. You're a human being. You're, you're not some God. We can make mistakes. We are humans. So extremely that you stay most important is be confident and be able to just few slides more. I want to see, show you. <clears throat> when you send the netiquettes mail, send a video with the form, warm, friendly, you know, video, instead of sending, I, I do not know, you can have a lot of things from Google, a lot of you can download. But I think with the little ones, what really helps is your voice. They are missing your voice. Send a video in your own recorded. You, you're all smart teachers. You all have a smartphone. Send, send them, create, to sing. Sing on the, this thing and send them whatever rhyme, whatever story. Because when it is in your own voice, you have done the first thing which I showed. The children learn 
by being connected with you. They say, wow, my ma'am send it, my ma'am's video. They don't want to see some, uh, you know, the kid doesn't know me and you send Shalini ma'am's video, he will hate it. He doesn't know me. You know, so it's when we go and watch YouTube, right? So many people, we, like nowadays we call it WhatsApp University, right? Everybody's a genius and you get so much of stuff on the WhatsApp. Which ones do we actually take interest? When it's somebody we know, when it's our own, then we go and we listen to the whole thing. Don't lie because otherwise we generally listen first 30 seconds and we put, keep putting it forward unless it is very engaging. Yeah. So extremely important, send a video in your own voice because these kids are very, very young. <clears throat> Read a loud video along with your finger, whatever you can think of, a lot of things. Um, these are some important tips I want to give out. Reach out. If you go to the bottom of the screen, these are very small kids. And, uh, you know, in, it, it's by law in US that a teacher is supposed to call up each and every child under her care. And I think in India, we should have that. And I feel as a teacher, if you call up the 25 kids, maybe one kid per day and just have a one-to-one -one chat with him and tell him, hi, sweetheart, I'm missing you. You are going to make hell of a lot of a difference in a child's life. He is going to, you know, be so much upbeat because this is a time for you. When I call you a Corona warrior is to spread positivity. So make a personal call, reach out. Use attention grabbers in your virtual class, puppets, dolls, whatever you want to do. Be playful. You know, gain children's attention with a clap, with a bell, whatever way you want to do it. Be clear and specific. What exactly? You remember the exercise I did when I asked you to read? You didn't know whether it was the colors or where it was the alphabets. So you read whatever you felt like. <clears throat> so be clear and specific. Understand learning styles. Very important. Each child learns in a different way. Some children learn from videos. Some children learn from, uh, you know, reading. Some children see so you need to know your children very, very, very well so that you're able to make a difference. Share your enthusiasm and give the children an active role. Extremely important. Allow the children to participate in your classes. Whatever way. Okay, everybody. See, I used to do this exercise when I was teaching adults that I asked the teachers. I said, do you listen to your children? All the teachers said, yes, ma'am, we listen. I said, okay, we are going to do an activity. And I told them, okay, you're going to just follow what I do. So you can't, you're so many of you, but I'll just share with you, which you can do it. You know, I asked them to clap this, that, and gave them little instructions. And then I said, okay, now clap is pulling your ears and pulling your ears is tapping your head. And they, everybody got confused. We think we are hearing. We think we are listening, but we are not. With the smaller kids, it's very important to connect. And my heart pains because the little kids, they love you. They love you. You, you need to understand that they just adore you. So now before it's only three minutes left, I'm just going to go back to the screen. This is a very important thing for me. And I want to end the session with this. It's your choice. What do you want to be? You want to be a carrot? You want to be an egg? Or you want to be a coffee bean? So there was this girl, she was having a lot of problems. And she went to her father and she said, I cannot handle my life. I want to give up everything. So he took her to the <clears throat> kitchen and he put three pots for boiling water. In one, he put uh, the egg. In the second, he put the carrot. In the third, he put the coffee. Now, what happens to the egg when it, in the boiling water or what happens to it? Some individuals when they feel, feel, feel tension, uh, the egg becomes hard from outside and soft from inside. So some people become very harsh, and but they're very soft from inside. So as a teacher, sometimes we are screaming, but from the heart we are saying, oh my God, I'm feeling so bad, but I'm in a bad mood. The second, the carrot, some teachers just give up when they feel the stress. Oh my God, I cannot take this virtual class. This is something I can't do. The third, <clears throat> you need to be like the coffee because the coffee changes the color of the water and also the aroma of the room. So a teacher is like a coffee. You're, you're not only creating an environment in the child's mind,
but also in his family. So you are making a difference to so many people. And you are a true Corona warrior as a pre-primary teacher. And I really, really want to thank and salute each one of you. God bless you. And I think uh, I'll hand it over to Shiri. Uh, thank you guys so much for any question or anything they have. Yeah, Shiri, are you there? Uh, Shiri? Yes, yes sir. Shalini, she's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Shali, now Navinder will pick up all the questions, whatever we get. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry, yeah. And uh, over to Navinder, please. Uh, thank you, Shali, ma'am. Thank you for the insightful <laughs> session. You have, you know, with your small, small thing, I have also gone back to my days when I started my career as a pre primary teacher. So, it was so wonderful being there with small kids. And I hope this whole session, all my teachers in this group are very, very energetic. And uh, I love all the primary teachers a lot. Uh, so let's come to the questions that our teachers have in their mind. So yeah. there are many yeah. new small, small strategies that you have discussed, the points that you have discussed with us. And it was really, very, very learning. Like you said, you should start your class with the puppet in your hand so that it becomes lively. Your children are waiting for you. Okay, which puppet child is taking it today? And you're passing your energy to your children before you take up any concept with the students. Also about the cooperative learning, ma'am. It is again very insightful how we can have a cooperative learning when we are taking a virtual classroom because we are not face to face. We are not sitting on the desk. But Still, we are together in our virtual classroom. And then uh, you have also discussed about, you know, creating a buddy. That was also really very, very important uh, feature that you have told us. Like, you know, there are students who are very shy. And especially in PK, some of the students will be for the first time in the class and they have not met each other at all. So many students will be shy. So we can have a buddy appointed uh, for those shy students virtually also. That is also a very good, great idea. We have right. talked about personalizing the messages and sending it to the students at home so that their parents can read. Again, a wonderful idea. I can even uh, see my teachers have written a lot of about this idea that they will be using this in their classrooms also. And uh, it was also about, you know, you have to be very strong with your decisions but flexible with your approach. So this is again something virtually since parents are there online, so there are certain things uh, you know, teacher has to be very, very stern with her decisions, but yes, she can change her approach. Uh, that is also one thing which is uh, very, very important. So, ma'am, here we are with some questions now. The first most important question which my teachers are asking us is about uh, what should be the class duration? Should we do it every day in the week? And how many students in one session should we take? See, um, what I would recommend, I mean, just at a personal experience and my ex whatever I've been through, I feel uh, two classes in a week are enough for the little ones. And uh, that's why I said 45 minutes and they, you can spread it out. Like, you know, if you want to 15 kids, if you have a class of 30, so maybe 15 kids in the first part and the 15 kids in the second half, because children have a very short attention span, these little ones. And more of it, more of the learning at this moment can be a booklet going home and a message going to the parents where they help them to do. But your classroom basically is more storytelling for discussion. It cannot be used a virtual class for teaching. Parents do have this complaint, something. Parents will always complain, sweetheart, because um, we are teachers, right? We know what is correct for the kid. We know what is important. The child at this stage should be learning all the life skills and uh, we cannot force them because the classroom environment is very different. Now the child is in the home environment and the learning has to continue. So where in the school we provide a complete holistic learning, here we, have, we are asking a parent to partner with us and help us, you know, what the children were doing in the classroom. And the parents can only do it. See, what happens with the parents sometimes is, it's a very, this thing, they feel the little ones are very tiny. No, they're not tiny. You need to set your rules and boundaries right from when the kid is born and telling him, 
So they, they, they need to understand the child needs to know. Even the daddy must be sitting for his work from home and the laptop, right? So the child should also know that I need to work. I need to do it. Maybe sometimes, let's say there may be instances where uh, the laptop is not there. The father has his work. The child cannot be given, whatever. In those cases, I think that's why I said a personalized call makes a lot of difference when you speak to a child. And I'm just saying that one child per day, you know, so that means like oh, 10 minutes of a chat with your child, which will make a hell of a lot of difference to a child's life. That's what I feel. So not more than two classes, you know. Thank you so much, ma'am. I hope teachers who are getting the session, they will uh, get the idea about how many, what is the duration and how many students they can put into one session. The second question, ma'am, that we have here is, what are, if you, can you please give us some ideas about how to conduct critical uh, thinking activities with the students online. So what all ideas can we give to our teachers? No, no, I didn't get you. Sorry, can you repeat? Uh, some idea about critical thinking activities with uh, the classrooms. So there can be a lot of that. It depends on what is the kind of, what, what exactly are you trying to teach? Now, critical thinking cannot be taught individually, right? It has to be related. So are you teaching, you trying to do it in English? Are you trying to do it in math? Are you trying to do it in life skills? Or what exactly are you doing? So there are a lot of activities. What I can do is I'll share it with you because otherwise it will take a lot of time. I can at least share 25 activities which the teacher can do because the most important thing, which I really want to answer, Navinda, because somebody mentioned your parents shouting that they cannot teach them anything so that is why i said you have to call up these parents and make them understand that see we they, now the situation is such the teacher cannot go home the child cannot come to the school and it is going to be like this for the i think till 2021 looking at things so we need to build a partnership and for that it takes an effort right? It is not easy to partner with parents. So I think you have to make it very understanding to them that I am sending this booklet. I'm expecting the child to do, let him do what he's doing because he's going to be showing me on the camera. So when you ask for critical thinking, one very important thing which you can do with little ones is giving them a question, you know, something interesting to think about for a day, you can have, like if you're having your two classes, Monday and Friday, very, very simple questions. You know, we think that four-year-olds doesn't know, but of course they know. You know, you can give them questions because your basic thing is that to expand their knowledge and they're able to think and find solutions. So give them something, questions which are related to their environment right now. You know, like you can ask them. I mean, I, it's amazing. I asked uh, that day a grade eight kid I'm not lying. I asked him, you, you are at home, right? So do you know how pressure cooker works? So he said, oh my God, I never thought about it. Now, these are things which parents can encourage at home. The teacher just has to give a guideline that, you know, let him help him with this, let him think. So what happens is you can play some sort of questions. You can have flashcards where you ask them to think, you know, with maybe a starting of a story and tell them, okay, like in English, and tell them, okay, what do you think will be the next flashcard? Let them think. Let them argue in a virtual classroom. Let them communicate. Because your job is to teach them the communication skills. How to conduct assessments. See, assessment, I feel on a personal level, there should be, uh, assessment should be more formative. It should be more on the spot with the little ones. You cannot have a test. We are not testing. In any case, things are changing. And whatever 21st century, you know, big, big workshops and we have been talking. Now the time has come to use it. Assessment is what? You know, formative assessment. Have you understood? Have you not understood? It's not a time where we expect them to rote learn things and be able to produce at the end of the year. It's all right. They will think something different. So what you need to do is like I made those, you know, that sheet, you know, that with those three teddy bears and saying, I understood, I didn't understand. I don't know at all. You can send that and tell the child, take which one? Because some children don't speak. They feel shy. I might in a group of, in a virtual class, what happens, whatever I'm speaking, everybody is listening. Right. So they, you, and so in you, it's not like a regular class where I can go and whisper in the you know, ears of the child. Listen, you didn't do well. 
So what, what is the kind of assessment you want with the little kids? I don't think so. I don't believe in assessment. I think it's more about trying to understand. At this stage, assessment is more for you to understand that what I've taught them, has the child understood or no? That is more important. So you need to be having those quick feedback things. Let them do self-assessment. Did you understand what story we spoke about today? How was it? Was it interesting? Was it boring? Give them those kind of things so that you understand how you can prepare your next class, you know, more interesting, more engaging. That's what I think. Thank you so much, ma'am. You have also answered the most asked, uh, <laughs> commonly asked question about how to take assessments online with so, so, you know, small children. Uh, the next question, ma'am, I have here is how do we have a writing activity conducted? Because we have a lot of tracing activities and a uh, lot of uh, writing. Yeah. How do I conduct those with my students? See, if, if you, that's what I said, the little letter to the child will really help. You know, it has to be personalized. I mean, see, I, I, I was a school head, right? And I had around, what, 150 teachers. And I'm being honest. I mean, I know I'm, a lot of my teachers might be there. On Teacher's Day, I would write each for each teacher with my own handwriting on the card. You know, it may take a lot of time because that is very important to give them, let them feel good. The same way with the child, what you have to do is send them a little letter that, okay, I would like you to do on Monday this, Tuesday this, or give them a choice. You know, because writing work, you cannot do in a virtual class. You cannot do the tracing in a virtual class. It's going to be very boring if you expect that I'm going to sit and everybody, you know, if I do an exercise with whoever is here, that you write your name hundred times, you're going to freak out. You can't do it. So what you have to do is you have to, oh, I love you. <laughs> Somebody wrote, I, hadn't, I wish I had an opportunity to work with you. Thank you. So you have, to, you have to guide the parents. Tell them, I am the teacher. I know. You, now he's at home. That things have changed. What we call a flipped classroom, it is happening. You need to be, you need to be helping me. Just let him, allow him to trace. Don't do it for him, but guide him. And you can even send up, if, if, you, if you think a parent is not going to read mails because they're also getting thousands of mails from their office, send a video, voice recording, WhatsApp, it's best. You know, dear parent, it's so nice you're helping me. Start always by praising the parent. He will do anything for you. And, pray, you know, let him understand the reason why you want him to help. Half an hour of your time you can't give to a child you know, who you have brought into this world and now the situation is such where we can't do anything. We cannot go into your homes. You need to help. So you have to make it very, very clear. And I think 80% parents understand. See, there's always that 10% parents will find a problem in everything. So as an educator, I always believe ignore the 10%, march on with the 90% who are with you because that's what matters. We will make a difference to the child, right? That's a mission. Yeah. Uh, so the next question that we have is, can you give us some you know, kind of uh, reference to a life skill session or a life skill lesson that we can prepare for our students? What so life See, life skill, again, you can prepare a little video on your own where you're, you know, like, let's say, what exactly are you trying to teach? Because I feel life skills is encompasses a lot of things. You know, if you take it from time management, if you take it from compassion, if you take it from, you know, it, it's a lot of things. So we need to identify. And I really feel that if you pick up one quality, make it a part of your, you know, circle time, make it a part of your theme, you know, it really helps. Like, suppose we maybe pick up honesty, then your, all your lesson plans can be, you know, with the honesty as a theme. So you're teaching him that particular skill. Now in the virtual classroom, you're actually teaching him a lot of life skills. That's where I spoke about cooperative learning. When you allow the children to talk because you cannot take a class with children sitting quiet. I mean, it's the most boring class. You know, you have to allow them to communicate. 10 minutes, they will listen to you because then their attention span is gone. And you can also create a lesson plan for home like where they, they can be encouraged to do a lot of things at home, which teaches them those skills. Like I want to share a very beautiful story, which will, I think, help you understand. And you can probably share it with your parents and tell them, listen, this is what happens. So there's a very famous guy, he's a, you know, some uh, Nobel laureate, and he's a physician and an artist. And when he won the Nobel Prize, I'm forgetting his name. So he was asked, 
that how come you're so creative? You're a physicist and you're an artist. How come? So he said, when I was two years old, I had gone to the refrigerator to take out milk from the fridge. Now, when I was taking out the glass, because my hands were small, the glass fell and the milk fell on the floor. So um, my uh, and my mother, you know, 99% parents, what will they say? Oh my God, you've dirtied the floor. You've made a mess of it. But he said, my mom, she said, come sweetheart, let's make designs in the milk. And we sat and made designs in the milk. Now, when you sit and make designs in the milk, that is where my creativity grew. So there are a lot of examples. What parents need is that it's not about learning A to Z. A pre-primary teacher is teaching them so many things. And they, they need to be partner with us. They, if they do not participate with us, if they keep shouting, the sufferer is not the teacher or the parent, it's the child. And our concern is the child. The child must learn. And learning is not just ABCD. Learning is so much. You know, like I always say, parents take them to McDonald's. But does the child know what is McDonald's? Where does the name come from? So you need to create that. You have to give parents that guideline when you say critical thinking, life thinking. You know, in your booklet, you can have, you know, that we, we want you to allow the child to think. So don't do the work for him. Don't do his, you know, just because uh, you want him to write well. Don't do it. Leave it. Let him, let him make lines. It's all right. He will learn something, you know. Everything is creativity. Everything is about creating an environment. Yeah. But the last question for the day is how do we deal with fussy parents and over intervening parents also? That's I think so in every session you must getting this question. I, I just love this question. It's my favorite. <laughs> Because I, I, I look at it, I always, uh, you know, you have to put yourself in other person's shoes. You have to also look at it the, from the parents' point of view. Um, so let me tell you, a lot of parents have lost their jobs. A lot of parents are finding a big challenge because suddenly the responsibility of even teaching the kid has come on them. They're not understanding. Um, they, they're having their own problems because work from home, family atmosphere, environment, there can be a lot of questions. Earlier it was the child was sent to school. So what happens sometimes, the frustration comes out on the teacher or on the child. Now, as a teacher, we have to rise above all that. And we have to remember the problem begins when we start trying to teach the parents. You should be very clear. We are not here to teach you. We are here to teach the child. And that is a job. So if they are sitting in the Zoom class with a small child, because naturally they will sit. The child can't operate the laptop. All the children are smart. Let me tell you, the only thing is we don't trust them. We don't allow them. But I can tell you, a three-year-old will be able to operate if you give him a chance, you know. So when you allow, they, we don't trust. No? And if you have read, there's a very beautiful book. I mean, there's a story also about it, that how children explore and they find their way. But so the father will sit or a mother will sit with them. So you send in your mailer that it's my sincere request that please do not speak during the class because I'm here to teach the children. If and I have another good idea which you can do is allow the parents to be part of your class, you know, maybe four parents uh, uh, in one class and mute them. Don't unmute, you know, just mute them. Tell them you can watch my class because you should be very confident if they want to watch. And if they have a question, tell them to send them to you. But if they are shouting, don't shout. Let's not come down to that level. You know, we are educationists and we are here to teach respect. So if somebody is shouting, what I would do is, I'm not saying that put your other cheek in front like Gandhi, but yes, you need to maintain your dignity and your dignity is in your hands. You should not let it perturb you. Give yourself a big pat at the back because you're doing a great job and you cannot ever forget that. So the, every day, get up in the morning and tell yourself, I'm the best teacher. I tell you, it will make a difference in your way of dealing with them. Because if you're confident, you anybody can come and shout. Some, some people might be watching and tell me, oh, this is wrong, that is wrong. I don't care. I'm saying what I feel is correct. And that is very important to have faith in your thoughts, to believe in what you're saying. And when you believe in what you're saying and you say it originally, then you don't need to fear anything. It's, it's, it's a simple this and send a polite message to parents. I think it's not a good idea. And when you're in a good mood, then we can talk. That's the best way. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Pam, for this session. Thank you. And I think so most of the 
queries were very well answered. We got very very creative ideas how to take the class lively, engaging, and uh, I'm sure most of my teachers will be uh, using this technique in their regular teaching for time to come. So I would now request all my teachers if you can just come together and open your window, your uh, videos. Can we do that? <laughs> So can we do? Can we just uh, switch on our videos, everyone? Yeah, yeah. I can see Farhat. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wherever you are sitting, just take your right hand and put it across your near to your heart. With everyone, okay. I request everyone to take your right hand and put it near your heart, where your heart is. Your heart is on your left, not towards your right. So please do that. <laughs> And just feel your heart and just remember the techniques and some small, small strategies that we have discussed here in this session. And how many of you will be taking what activities tomorrow in the class? So I want all of you to just put your hand across the heart and just uh, close your eyes and remember those two activities that I will do tomorrow in my session. And if you like our uh, session, I would give you a request all of you to can we have a thumbs up on the screen. If you can just click on the reactions, click on the thumbs up. Thank you so much everyone. Thank you teachers for attending the session. Till we meet again next with a new topic. Thank you all and bye bye. Thank you Shani ma'am. Thank you so much for this, uh, your session. And it was really, really, very useful. All the feedback that we are getting is very, very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye.